Hello everyone and welcome back to This Is Real Life. I'm your host Sherry and today we are on the family room floor because we are going to do another DIY. And what are we going to do today? It's kind of a funny story. <laughs> You know how like I'm making all these bold claims like 2020 is our year. We're going to get all of our shit done that we've been putting off. It's happening now. 2020. Everything's perfect. We're going to be more organized. Our house is going to be in order. Nothing left undone in 2020. Yeah, we're doing that. But I'm sure a lot of you guys were like, oh, she probably means like the stuff we put off in 2019. Maybe we've been putting it off for like I don't know, six months. Maybe we've been extra, extra lazy and we put it off for 12 months. Yeah, guys, I've literally been putting this project off for 17 years. Let's just sit there for a second. I know, I know you're thinking, seriously, she's got to be kidding. There's no way. Sherry's not that lazy. She seems to have all of her shit together all of the time. There's no way she is heavily exaggerating. Well, I'm not heavily exaggerating at all. The story goes like this. When we first moved into this house, it was there. It's a brand new build, moved in with nothing. No paint on the walls, no furniture, no drapery, no window coverings, you name it, nothing was here except for the shit that we came with when we moved out of our condo 17 years ago. And you know, I host a Christmas party for our friends every single year just because we moved into a new house to me, didn't mean we were not gonna have the Christmas party. So I had from like November until mid-December to get the shit in order. Painted everything. I remember being up at midnight, painting the hallway, all of this stuff. I had a dining room and a sitting room right in the very front of the house that had these two picture windows facing the street. No window coverings on them. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna make my own drapery. And I did, they're beautiful, you'll see them. I did the drapery for the two front picture windows. Now the dining room, I have the front picture window and then like a smaller window here on the side of the house. Well, my intention was always to put drapery on that window as well but I never did. So now here's the best part of the story. <laughs> when I made the drapery for the front two windows, I had planned to also do drapery for the side window. So I purchased all of my supplies 16, 17 years ago. So what you see before you are the supplies for the small window. And it's a damn good thing I did because <laughs> A, the fabric store where I got the fabric from no longer exists in my town. So I got this fabric, this fabric, this fabric here. And I got some batting. Oh, I got these tie backs there. This is my bag of supplies. Purchased at the Home Depot 16, 17 years ago. I have my L brackets, cup hook. It's literally been sitting in one of my guest bedroom closets, just like you see it for 16, 17 years. But guess what? It's 2020 and we are not putting shit off anymore. We are getting these projects done and we are going to do DIY custom drapery that get this, you don't sew a lick. The only thing I had to go out and buy today, and this is what's gonna give us our amazing finish without even getting out the sewing machine, hem tape. That's how we're gonna make it. So we're gonna do custom cornice box with a sheer curtain and then drapery panels over the top of that that we're gonna tie back. Now, because this window is skinny, I'm only gonna do one and I'll show you what I mean. So let's go check out the drapery that's already been hanging in my house for about 16, 17 years now. Okay, sitting room, you can see the drapery there. Oh, so lovely. Move over to the dining room, boom, there's the drapery there. Oh, and then look it, there's a window that is naked. So, custom cornice box with the sheer curtain panels and then the drapery. I did not make it so that it opens and closes and it's been that way for 16, 17 years. And that window has been this way for 16, 17 years. But we're gonna fix that today. I told you, it's been a while. Since it has been a while, I forgot a little bit what I did. I just went and took some measurements and I know that I had already 
pre-cut all my stuff for my cornice boxes. I don't know if my fabric's pre-cut, but that's okay, because we're not gonna start with our fabric. We're actually gonna start with the cornice box. That's kind of like our housing for these curtains. So what do we need for our cornice box? You need some wood. I'm surprised this shit isn't petrified because it's been in my closet for 16, 17 years. So this is just cheap ass pine. So you need your front piece cut to not your exact window width, but a little wider than your window width. Because obviously once this cornice box is made, you need some wall space on either side of your window to actually screw it into the wall. And I'll tell you how much wider I did as soon as I actually go measure my window. And then your side pieces to your cornice box you want that to be the depth. When you put it together, like if my hand was the wall, so it needs to sit on top, it is four inches away from the wall. So this four inch space, this is where all of our curtain rigging is going to go once this cornice box is made. It's a damn good thing I went and measured my window because I don't have that great of a memory of you know what happened yesterday, let alone what happened 16, 17 years ago. So in gathering, I never cut this piece of wood to size. I cut my side pieces to size, but not this piece. My window width is actually 29 and the window sill is 33. This board is 42. I need to go out into the garage really quick and chop this board down to 30 three because I want it two inches away from the window on either side. I'm literally just gonna get the jigsaw out really quickly, measure this, draw a line, jump, jigsaw, and then we'll come back in, jump, put this together. So we're back. That was quick, that was easy, now it's the right size. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put on our side pieces, real easy. We are just going to flip this over and we're just gonna put a couple screws. This is the front and the floor is the wall. We're going to just line up these edges. We're not gonna wood glue it or anything like that. We're just gonna put a couple screws to hold these side pieces on and then we're gonna cover it and it's gonna be amazing. We're just gonna make sure this is lined up. We're gonna go boom, boom. And what's great about this is we don't need to be outside. Although it is a beautiful day and we could be outside, we don't need to be outside. Screw some screws in and we're gonna stay indoors today. Easy, easy. Screw one, screw two. And then we're gonna flip it and we're gonna do this same thing to this side. Perfect. So now that we have the basic structure of our cornice box done, we are going to cover it and make it look beautiful. And all you need for that, your staple gun, your fabric of choice, and some batting. What you wanna do is lay out your batting, and I don't even know how thick this is. You can get whatever thickness of batting you like. 16, 17 years ago, I got this thickness. We're gonna lay our batting out on the floor, and then we're just gonna take our cornice box and wrap it like a little present. And we're gonna put staples, staples. So I went and felt my other cornice boxes, and they did feel a little bit cushiony. So I'm thinking that we doubled it up. And I'm going to just pull and staple and pull and staple. What I like to do when I'm recovering anything, I like to work from the middle, bottom, middle, top. And then I just alternate side, bottom, side, top, this side, bottom, this side, top. And then we're gonna fold it over like so, cut off our excess and staple that in as well. Pull that nice and tight. Yay. In between the center and the end, I'm gonna put one here. Pulling tight as we go. And same thing here. Good, good, and good. The thing with the batting is, is we don't need a million staples because we are gonna put fabric over the top of this. So we just want this held securely, but it doesn't need to be like a staple every single inch. And then we'll lay our fabric out and then our fabric, we will make sure that we staple nice and close so everything's nice and tight. So I'm just gonna fill in a couple more staples and then we'll wrap it in our fabric. Batting is on. I wrapped my um, side pieces, just put in three staples there, cut off my excess. We're good to go as far as the batting is concerned. I'm happy with the puffiness of that. So now it is time for our fabric. Okay, so here's the laziness in me coming out. <laughs> and I do this every single time. This fabric clearly has fold 
creases. When I am a non-lazy person, we get the iron out right now and iron this. I don't do that because I'm lazy and I got shit to do. And ironing this is not one of those things I wanna do. And when you're recovering something, you are pulling this fabric so damn tight that you are just gonna pull those wrinkles right out. So I don't worry about them. I leave them in. <laughs> I know. But let's just say this was beat to shit and super wrinkly, then yes, I would get an iron out and iron it. So we want the nice side of our fabric facing the floor. Put our cornice box back on the top. And I have a lot of extra fabric of this. <laughs> let's save it for another 17 years. I'm not gonna waste fabric. So I know that I just need to come into about here. It's liney fabric. We do wanna make sure it's very straight up and down. We don't want our fabric cattywampus or you know our cornice box like this. And then when we hang it up, the lines are like mm. And basically, easy peasy, we're gonna do the exact same thing with this fabric as we did to the batting as far as stapling it down. The only difference is, is I am going to put in more staples so I don't have this weightiness happening with my fabric. So let's get to stapling. Work from our center out. So I'm gonna staple about here or not. Am I literally out of staples already? Okay guys, I mentioned this in a past video. Who's invented that thing that I want invented for the staple gun as well as the stapler on your desk at work? A light that says, basically you have one staple left because there is nothing worse than doing what I just did right now. You have everything lined up perfectly. You think you've got staples in your staple gun. You go to staple and then bam, nothing. <sighs> so let's do that again. I gotta load up my staple gun. We rewind. We're gonna pull our fabric very tight in the center, making sure that we are going up above our batting. Staple, yay. Now we're gonna pull tight from the top and staple. Moving to the center between here and here, making sure that my lines in my fabric are straight as they come up and around the edge. Pulling our fabric tight and staple there. Now we just do that 8,000 more times along the bottom and along the top, and then we'll wrap it up this way and do our sides. Okay, yay. Bottom, top, completely stapled. So now all I need to do is Fold over this, staple this edge down, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a nice pretty corner and then staple into here. So my first goal is pull this over, staple this edge here, and then make nice corners, cut away any extra fabric that's too bulky, and then pull this down nice and tight, and then staple, ba-boom, like that, top, ba-boom, bottom, and then do the other side. On these sides, I'm literally gonna stand up my cornice box like this, kind of lean it on my head like that. Use the pressure to staple down in there. <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I almost have every single part stapled down. I'm just on my last corner. And so to do that, I'm just kind of making it work, kind of like maybe wrapping a present. I'm taking the edge of the fabric, tucking and folding so I get a smooth corner. And then I'm just gonna take my staple gun and staple that. And then I'm gonna stand it up and then pull all of this fabric in tight, pulling really, really tight, and then staple, staple. And then for this little corner, I'm gonna pull really, really tight in the corner, and I'm gonna put another staple right there, trying to smooth out that crease so we don't have a lot of creasage right there. I'm gonna take my staple gun and go this way at it. It's very hard to do backwards. Staple there. Voila, we did it. So now I'm just gonna trim away this fabric, and then we'll see what it looks like. Okay, all of our excess fabric is trimmed away. Let's flip it over and see. Oh, look at it, so pretty. This is our cornice box. 
It's nice and padded. This looks professional as fuck. Let's not get it twisted. So now what we need to do, I mean, you actually could stop at a cornice box if you just wanted something, you know, decorative above your window. Maybe you already have blinds on that window, the little roll up shade. I don't know how much money I spent on this because this was 17 years ago. It couldn't have been that much. The wood is cheap, batting is pretty cheap. It would just come down to your fabric choices. Hopefully you could use like a 50% off coupon at the Joann's, maybe find some clearance fabric. That's gonna be what makes or breaks the cost of your custom drapery. I selected three different types of fabric, a sheer, a, like a corduroy one, and then this one that's actually for the drapery. I thought it was pretty and I still think it's pretty, which is a damn good thing because I'm not about to redo all the drapery in my house. Next up, we are going to do our curtains, both sets, no so. Since I am doing a sheer and then a drapery, I'm gonna do my drapery first. I do know that the width of this is the width of one panel and I only need one panel. I went and measured the length when all is said and done with the hems and everything for my height. It's eight feet, six inches. Here's the thing. This has been in a closet. Every time I get into that closet, Bob wants to get into that closet. And little did I know, Bob was in the closet using my beautiful drapery fabric as a scratching post. So right here, it's kind of jacked up. I don't know how much is left on this bolt. I'm gonna measure this out and hopefully cut off the part that Bob snagged to shit. So first I'm gonna measure this out and then we're gonna hem it using that hem tape. So all we're gonna have to do is get our iron out and we're gonna poop, 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 poop. And it's gonna be amazing and super fast and no sew. So I have cut my fabric and I wasn't able to cut off all of Bob's claw marks, but I'm hoping that when I iron it out and it's all hem taped and this is like in the corner and you won't be able to tell. The width of this fabric was 56. When I went to go look at what I did on the ones I already made, those cornice boxes obviously are huge. I took the 56 width and ended up with the gathers that I made in the fabric, it brought this size to 48 inches. Well, we know this cornice box right here is a tiny baby and it's only 33. So I didn't wanna use the entire 56 width because then my gathers, my little pleats, if you will, would be a million in this little cornice box compared to what I've got on the bigger cornice boxes. So. How did I come up with the math on how the width is gonna be? I said, okay, your original fabric panel width was 56. You got it down to 48. I minus 48 from 56, which is eight. I know that the width of this cornice box is 33. So I added eight inches to 33, get it? And cut the width of this fabric down to 41 and a half. So when I roll my hem over, it will be eight inches bigger than I need it, which is 41, so that all of my gathers, once I get it inside the cornice box, match up with my gathers from my bigger one. I know that makes total sense to you. So next, we have to hem it. And I have my ironing board and my iron out, and I have my hem tape. I left the raw edge on the fabric because I'm literally just gonna turn that and hem that with the hem tape. Then I'm gonna take this edge that I cut the width out of and hem that the exact width of this hem tape, which is a half inch. And then I'm going to also do that to the bottom. But for the bottom, I'm gonna roll it and then roll it one more time so my bottom doesn't have any raw frayed edges. I do not follow the directions on the hem tape at all. Working on a heat resistant surface, place the stitch witchery between the layer of fabric. And then it says cover with a damp cloth. Press and steam. I don't do that. I forego the entire damp cloth. It is a waste of time and I feel like it doesn't make this adhere as well. I just put the hem tape in between the fabric and then I have a spray bottle and I just spray it. That's my damp cloth. And then I just iron right over the top of it and it seems to work fine. That's me. I've tried the damp cloth method before and I just didn't feel like it 
really stuck, especially depending on the thickness of your fabric. This is pretty thick. So let's get to hemming with no sewing machine. We are up at the ironing board. It does say, which I do follow this direction, it says to put your iron on the wool setting. Iron's good to go. This is so easy. If you've never used this before, open her up. It's kind of like this um, webbing-ish. It's magical. What I do is I kind of just lay it out. This is my raw edge of fabric. So fold this over the exact width of the hem tape. Now you don't need to stretch the hem tape because if you do stretch it, it just breaks. I fold my fabric over, I get my trusty squirt bottle and I squirt it. And then I just take my iron, press it down. Just be careful, you don't want your fabric to burn. It's kind of like when we did the iron on t-shirt transfer situation. You want it on there just long enough, but that one second you're on there too long, you burn your fabric and it turns a nice brown color. You don't want that. Voila, it's down, it's down. Look, it's like we hemmed it with the sewing machine, but we didn't. So easy, easy. On the raw edge of fabric, it's pretty easy to stay in line because you can see the salvage edge is kind of like a whitish. I just follow where the fabric is and fold it over that much. <sighs> Feels like I'm gonna be here a while ironing. It should go by fast. So yeah, I'm just gonna iron my hem in. So we already have finished up the one long edge of our fabric, and now we're gonna do the other long edge before we do our bottom hem. And it really didn't take that long. All you do when you get to the end, you literally can just rip this hem tape, just like that. So because I don't have a salvage edge on this edge of the fabric, I'm kind of putting it a half an inch away from the edge, and then same thing. I'm just gonna fold it over, squirt it down, iron it, and be done. We are on just the last little bit of our other side. And seriously, hem tape, look at how amazing that finished edge is. Now that this is done, we can do our bottom hem because we don't need to hem the top at all. It's gonna get rigged inside of our cornice box. We don't need a hem for that. We only need a hem for our bottom. So just keep track of the way your fabric is facing. I know my bottom is the cups. What we're gonna do is we're gonna fold it and fold it. So I'm gonna take my fabric and I'm gonna do one strip of hem tape, fold it up. Because see these weird raw strings? We don't want that. So we're gonna do one hem and then we're gonna fold it one more time so that bottom edge is nice and clean. Also, that thicker bottom edge gives our fabric some weight at the bottom. My personal preference, I only hemmed the sides one time in, but the bottom, I'm gonna do ba-boom, ba-boom. So it's nice and clean along the bottom. Get your hem tape and just do what you were doing this entire time. I do feel like I am saturating the fabric to get a little bit more steam rather than just like a nice like pew, 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 squirt. I'm like really getting in there with the squirt bottle, like really wet it down because you wanna hear your iron go with steam. And then just so you know, like I'm even letting my iron sit right now. Like I'm just letting the steam go until I kind of don't hear it anymore. So we're gonna hem this once, hem this twice. And then we're gonna iron because there are a couple creases that we do need to get out before we rig it to our cornice box. Yeah, that's it, easy peasy. Just hemming without a sewing machine. It's kind of the best thing ever on the planet. So I'm at the very end of my last hem, and now all I'm going to do is just iron this fabric, you know, just like normal to get out any wrinkles. And then once it's all ironed, then we'll get back on the floor and we will rig it into our cornice box. Okay, so now I have two funny stories for you. First funny story is I went on a rant just now without recording. So I'm going to reenact the rant. However, it's not really gonna be a reenactment because I'm still fucking pissed about it. Here's what happened. I was ironing, you know, all our hems are in, everything's great. I was just ironing the creases out of our drapery fabric so that we could rig it to our cornice box. And as I'm ironing, here's me. Oh, oh, oh. oh look, you're almost done, it looks so good. I jokingly, to myself out loud, 
said, wouldn't that be funny if you hemmed everything on the wrong side? I was like, <laughs> that would be so funny. Like funny in a not funny way. And then I said to myself, no, you didn't do that. And then I got to thinking and I'm looking at this fabric and I'm like, son of a bitch, I think you hemmed it on the wrong side. And guess what people, I did. This is the front of my fabric. This is the back of my fabric. You see how I um, turned my salvage edge over here? Yeah, I turned it onto the front of my fabric. It's supposed to go this way, like this. This side of my fabric is like kind of solid and goldish. This side of my fabric has some like white and little variances of gold. This is the front of my fabric. This is the side that I want facing out. Therefore, the hem needs to be rolled to the back. I didn't do that. Now, I've been sitting here ripping. <laughs> Seriously. I've ripped out this side of the hem. It still has hem tape that I need to rip off. But thankfully, we didn't sew it because we would have to seam rip it. And that's super, super pain in the ass to seam rip. But it's still a pain in the ass to have to redo all of this again. But that's what I'm gonna do. And I could have not have told you. I could have just been pissed all alone, fixed it off camera, and then went on like everything was normal. That's not my MO. This is real life. People make mistakes, me included. Sometimes I fuck up. I hope that in showing you, it will save you from messing up. If you do mess up while I'm pissed and it is gonna take me a little extra longer, it's not that big of a deal. We can fix this. This is not the end of the world as far as our drapery is concerned. It's just irritating, that's all it is. I had to show you because you know I'm all about full disclosure. I took out this one side, we're gonna re-hem it with our hem tape, good thing I bought two damn rolls of it, and we're gonna do it to all three sides again. So I've gotta do one long edge, the other long edge, the entire bottom. <sighs> this is my life right now. It's okay, it's okay. We're gonna make it through, we're gonna be okay. <laughs> We're just gonna redo it. It gives us extra practice on hem tape. Let's think of the positive. Crisis averted. Was it a pain in the ass? A little bit. Sometimes mistakes happen, but we have rectified that mistake. It's all perfect. This is my good side of the fabric. This is my bad side of the fabric. Now that we're all hemmed, we're going to go ahead and affix our drapery panel to our cornice box. From the top of my cornice box all the way to the bottom of the curtain is 100 and a half inches. So I need to measure from the top of the cornice box all the way to the bottom and then adjust my curtain accordingly. So I'm going to just measure on down. Now that I have my 100 and a half measurement way down there, I'm gonna pull this piece of fabric until I reach my measurement. So now we know this is where we're going to staple our fabric. This edge here is the edge that is going into the corner. Because I don't want my hem lined up flush like this, I kind of want it to turn the edge so that when it is in the corner, this edge of the fabric is facing the wall. So I'm gonna put a holder stapler in there right now. Perfect amundo. Now, I'm gonna come across to my other end. According to the ones I've already made, the edge of the drapery panel is three inches from center. So I want this edge of the drapery panel to be three inches from this edge of the cornice box. Perfect, there's my three inch mark. So I'm gonna put a staple right at my little mark right there. Bam. Now I am going to just go boom, 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 measuring every so often just to make sure I'm at the 100 and a half. So I'm pretty even across the board. See, we've got like a teepee going on. So I'm gonna grab the center of the teepee and I'm going to eyeball the center of my cornice box. And that is where I'm gonna staple my next staple. This is how we make beautiful pleat situations. Now, every center, I'm gonna make a teepee, boom, and I'm gonna grab the center and then I'm gonna eyeball where the center of this staple and this staple are, and that's where my next staple is going to go, boom. 
and we'll do the same thing with this little teepee. Voila. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do what I just did to this side. Lift it up, make a teepee, plop it down in the center. Look at my pattern, make sure everything is lined up. Staple. Okay, so now we have all these weird teepee bumps. So I'm gonna pull this back and tie it back this away. So we wanna help the fabric go that way. So I'm gonna take a teepee bump and I'm gonna staple it away or towards the way I am pulling it back. Boom, and look, we have a nice, beautiful pleat. Take my other teepee bump, turn it towards the way I'm gonna be drawing the fabric, staple. And you just keep going along like this. Look at those beautiful pleats. Okay, now this is another one of those places where you could end here. Cornice box, drapery panel, hang it, done. Look at that. Oh, my Luigi, that looks so good. But we're not stopping there. I mean, we might stop there for tonight. <laughs> we're actually going to put a sheer fabric panel. I don't want my sheer fabric panel to be right smack on top of this drapery panel. So what I did, I made my own curtain rod because it was cheaper. Oh, looks like I'm gonna have to cut it. So we're gonna just screw this into the inside about, I don't know, an inch or so away from here. So our hand can slide up and in. And this is gonna be our drapery rod. We're gonna take our sheer fabric panel and we're gonna mount it to this drapery rod. So there's a gap between our curtain and our sheer fabric. Sheer fabric panel and hanging tomorrow. We are on day two, which technically should be day one if we weren't such damn fools and hemmed our drapery fabric wrong and then had to redo it again. But that's okay. It was an easy fix. Nothing to like get super mad about. Although even in the time while it was happening, I was real pissed, but that's okay. I'm good now. If Bob would just stop bugging me. As you know, my little sheer homemade curtain rod was too long. So I cut it down to my inside width here. So what we need to do, cut our sheer fabric first to length and width. I used the full width on the bigger windows, but because this is only 33, I need the width of my sheer to be 33 as well. Now, the great thing about sheer fabric is, if you don't know this already, it's amazing. You're just gonna measure your width and make a little slit in it, and then you can go whack, and it'll rip nicely. Like this, I've already ripped the bottom, and see, it looks kind of like a hem. It doesn't fray or anything. I'm gonna measure it to the correct width. Wrap it around my homemade curtain rod. I covered it in brown paper only because I didn't want the sheer fabric to snag on the wood, but I think you could probably skip that step. <laughs> so let's measure the width, cut the sheer, and then get this thing together and hung up on the wall. And then we can check off the 17 year to-do list because this will be done. Okay, so we're gonna cut it at 35, but you gotta see this. All you do is you make your little slit and then just pull it. Bob, Jesus. But you see what I mean? Like it kind of makes its own little hem. So you just keep pulling and lo and behold, it's straight. I don't know how Sheer does it, but it does it. And voila. So this is extra. We can make like, what's that you say? Oh, don't mind me. I'm just, you know, on the set of Dallas trying to find out who killed JR. But never mind that, I have dream for you, so. <laughs> so we have our width and it's 35-ish. And so what we're gonna do, we're just going to take this and staple it to our curtain rod. And then we're gonna mount our curtain rod where we need it mounted based on the length of our drapery that we've already stapled to our cornice box. If you did want to make it so that your sheer panel did open and close. I just went and looked at what I did on the big windows and I actually did wrap the sheer around the curtain rod and I hem taped it sealed. So on those bigger windows, I could, if I wanted to go like this. Never ever in 17 years have I pulled those sheer curtains back, 
ever, ever once, never. So I'm going to skip that. I'm just going to staple it right to it. Because this is 31 and this is 35-ish, we are going to go to the end with one end, to the end with the other end, and then we're going to do the TP scenario that we did on our drapery. So we're going to go right here. Ba bam And then let's just TP it. And then just kind of fill in where you need to fill in. And voila, we're done. Let's get this mounted inside of here and then we'll hang it. I have laid my cornice box out. I also rolled my shear over a couple of times because it's really, really long. I did a pretty snug fit, shove it on in here, boom. We do want to make sure it's straight. Now all we're going to do really, really easy, we're going to just take this screw, diagonally screw in from here into our wood here. Yay. Oh, she's intact. Now I'll just do the other side. All right, we are mounted and good. Okay, I can't believe it. We are ready to mount this puppy. Now, here's the sucky thing. We've got our L brackets, and in a wonderful, perfect world, you could mount your L brackets to your cornice box and then hang everything on the wall. However, you can't do that. There's not enough room between the cornice box and where the wall would be to actually get your hand or a screwdriver or anything in there. So what you have to do, and I just got, what are these? Back 17 years ago, I'm not even joking, I did not buy these new, corner braces and they are one and a half inch. Ideally, like this edge of the cornice box is on your wall. So you wanna have an L bracket that's flush here and an L bracket that's flush here on both sides. So what I have to do is I have to go put these on the wall in the exact right spot then this can just slide right on and then I can get my hand this way and screw. So that's what I have to go do right now. So this is real scientific. Help this up to here like so. And I got it even with the corner and even with the bottom. Took my handy dandy pen, reached up and scribbled a line in it. And then when I got over to this side, I said, that kind of looks straight to me from the angle that I'm standing. And then <laughs> I made a line here. So now I'm gonna take my L brackets out of my pocket and I'm gonna screw them in, making sure corner of my L bracket lines up with my line. I'm just gonna stick one screw in. Let's dry fit this and make sure we have it in the right spot. Oh, I think I have to nudge this one over just a hair. It's too tight. I can't get it. Voila. The L brackets are just in the wall and I have this uh, dry fitted in and now I just need to screw from underneath into the L bracket into this side piece. But you wanna make sure you're totally level. I feel like I'm level, but I'm gonna screw in this side first and then that'll let me move this up and down as needed. But look, we did it. So let's screw this to the L brackets that we already have in the wall and then we'll put the finishing touches on this custom drapery. It looks good, dude, look. I'm pretty impressed 17 years later. Okay, so we're good. She's up there. So next, we just need to put in our little cup hook so that we can put our tie back and then pull this side of our fabric back. Since I already have a cup hook here, I'm just gonna match that up and then voila, be done. The next time you see it, it's gonna look amazing. Okay, finishing touches are done and it looks amazing. You guys are gonna die. You're gonna be like, why didn't you do that 17 years ago? Uh, uh, uh. Oh my God. It's like my dining room is finally complete. I can't even believe it. It looks so good. And I trimmed up my shear so it's exactly where it needs to be on the bottom. Look at that level, the pullback, everything is perfect. Okay, we are done. 
And the day two part didn't take that long at all. It was like maybe an hour, which we totally could have finished up on day one, again, had we been paying attention. But that's okay, because our 17 year project is now done. This is the thing with like getting things done and doing them quite well, I might add. It's like I am standing back looking at it saying, number one, why didn't you ever finish this, you know, 16, 17 years ago? But number two, now that I actually have it done, I feel like such a sense of accomplishment. That's, I think, why I love DIY so much. It's like you make something with your own hands and your own brain. You just stand back and look at it and be like, motherfucker, I did that. And then not to mention, when people come into your house and they comment on it, like, oh my God, your drapery is so custom. It must have cost you a fortune. You're always supposed to just take the compliment and be like, yes, thank you. But me, I'm like, uh, no, I made those myself and they cost me $59.99 or whatever the price was. That's what I love about DIYs. I can't get enough of DIYs. It's gonna sound really weird and I'm getting like a tiny bit emotional over my custom drapery, but it's like, I did that. I did that. I didn't call someone. I didn't go to like fucking, I don't even know where they sell drapery. JCPenney Home Store, I don't have any idea. And you know, just throw these up. And that's fine if you do that, totally fine. Sometimes I get into some DIYs and I'm like, okay, this is taking extremely too long. It's not worth it. Even though I saved half the price, I should have just gone out and bought the thing for full price. But something like custom drapery is so easy, especially you don't even have to sew it. Rip some sheer fabric, hem tape some shit and make a cornice box, staple gun it all together and voila. I'm just saying, I love DIYs because sense of pride you know and i have friends that diys are not their jam but their house is decorated to the fucking t and it's beautiful but they didn't get their hands dirty and make it themselves and think of it and even stuff i make that isn't quite perfect nobody knows it's not quite perfect except me people still come in and be like oh my god that is so badass DIY something. It's uplifting. It's like, now that I finished this today, the whole rest of my day is gonna be like, geez, a great day. It really is. That's all I'm saying. If you've got a bare window, do this. Cause you can, you can do it. It's not hard, I promise you, it's not hard. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to ring that notification bell so that you are alerted to all of the DIY Wednesday videos I push out every other Wednesday at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. And hold on, hold on. Don't forget about the merch. Be sure to share this video with your family and friends. And as always, thanks for hanging out.